Good morning, everyone, on this sunshiny morning, um, the last day of February. We give thanks to God for God's faithfulness in this season of Lent to us, um, journeying with us all the days of our lives. And we gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son. You have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. It might seem weird to have these different texts right now, but they're actually part of the morning prayer. But we just don't do those outside of lunch. Today's word is dazzlement. And our text is John 4. John 4, verses 7 through 15. The Samaritan woman. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan. Woman, how can you ask me for a drink? For the Jews did not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it was, who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than the, our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become to them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have it to keep coming here to draw water. So dazzlement, let us pray. Lord, you are like a wildflower. You spring up in places where we least expect you. The bright color of your grace dazzles us. Far from trying to possess you, may you possess us. Okay. The gift of simplicity overturns what we have expected. The cactus lover intensely watches the night blooming um, cerises she has tenderly nurtured indoors. I don't know what that word is. It must be with cactuses. But it sometimes disappoints her holding back its fragrant secret or letting its flower too quickly fall. Then realizing that her expectations have gone unmet, she takes a fresh and longer look outside at the dawn. Beyond the window, a desert bloom blossoms and wildflowers defy the barren sandscape. Expectation often keeps us busy and forces us to fuss over everything that we plant and cultivate, work and do, harvest and store. Well and good, the garden of life needs cultivators and reapers. But the busy, fussy gardener can overlook the wild beauty that comes on its own and simply amazes. When the time comes for grace to be discerned, this divine grace draws the eye away from the tended pot where a meager and momentary bloom would have been. Grace pulls our attention instead to the flowers to the colors or fragrances that arrive without our effort by the creator's activity. The sense of duty, of course, calls us to be responsible, to plant, to snip, to prune, to nurture, to watch what grows. But duty needs a context. Left to itself, obligation takes over life and preoccupies the mind of the dutiful. Needing and reaching for help when face, facing the call of duty 
we may be tempted to grasp greedily for whatever is at hand, to want to possess it, and still to name it grace. But if grace is thus seized, it loses its power to surprise. Divine grace instead possesses the free person. It comes in the name of the Lord of the unexpected, the one who comes to dazzle with the weary in our otherwise dully gray field of vision. And then our picture is a bunch of dried flowers. It's like roses and lavender maybe, I don't know. So dazzlement, we'll start with the, the text from John with the Samaritan woman and the woman at the well. Um, this Satan had, had used, and Jesus had, um, had used, we do not believe, live by bread alone, but only by the word of God from Deuteronomy chapter eight. Um, Jesus responded to the temptation with that, of it's not just our bellies, it's not just um, our daily bread needs that God gives, but God gives us an eternal word that, um, that is more than just substance. It's life itself. It's meaning. It's purpose. It's joy. Um, it's promise for us, which is so much more than just the the everyday need and um, the the demand of of every day. So God's word is both the law, the the provision, and then the gospel, the the abundance of that, and more and and complete peace and provision and grace and gospel and promise, all those things. Um, and then here in the Samaritan woman, we have living water. Um, I always think it's funny that she's like, oh, I'll never have to come out, out here again and, and, and carry this water into the village. And it's like, well, <laughs> you kind of will. You, you really need to live with water. But Jesus' water is, um, I mean, she's of course alone and she's coming, um, She's ostracized in many ways. Um, there's a lot of images of wells like that in the Bible. Um, her and Jesus shouldn't be interacting, but because Christ is one that doesn't know those barriers and breaks through them, actually, they are interacting in that way. Um, so a woman who's who needs that that life giving water that that flows through us and in us and overflows in our lives. Um, to to this to the point of eternal life is such a gift that we cannot pull up from a well. There's not a, a a task that we can do that will give us that or provide us that. That's only something that Christ can do um, with him his own life, not with some bucket or some tactic, but with his own um, his own word coming in and for us. So within that framework. We look at God as a wildflower. I mean, I don't know about this at first, but let's see. Um, I do know that there's times when you just wait for something to bloom or you you wait for those first snowflakes to fall. Um, they're kind of magical. Or for um, the first blooms on a tree. And or if you after you've pruned, you hope that it will bloom again. If did I prune too much? Did I I'm not prune enough? Or the seeds you plant will the sun come at the right time, diligently watering them, um, caring for them, taking out, deadheading all the, the blooms, you know, so there'll be more. And it can disappoint us because maybe something didn't happen in just the right way or circumstances out of our control or sometimes one little bloom that we've taken so much time at, we're focused just here in that one thing rather than seeing the great provision of God all around us. And in this, in the case of her, the one cactus blossom not blooming, but then the desert had bloomed all around her and she would have missed it. She would have missed it by focusing on what hadn't been given. I think that's an important piece of this, this lesson today of sometimes we're hyper-focused on here. We don't see the, the way God's providing in all the other ways and the beauty and the joy and the, the whimsy and the dazzlement um, outside our, our immediate field of vision. But then we have other places where have your expectations kept you focused on the focus focus on those things 
and your life ends up um, reducing far more than God would have you reduce it. There's times to focus on what's right before you. That's This is a little different. This is when your focus may be on a problem or a task or something that has to be done and you forget why you're doing it. You forget um, the other um, things that maybe might balance the hard work and the duty with, with the joy of what God has um, amazed you with and provided you with. So grace pulls our attention away from the, the mundane, the drudgery, the worry, the concern, the anxiety. Um, God pulls us away from that and shows us that even without your staring at this, even without your ceaseless working and your concern, look at all that has been given. And then realize that this thing you're worried about is also in God's hands. I think that's an important part of this of so often when when something matters to us we um we put all our hope and faith on that thing one thing happening and we think that we are the only ones that are going to make it happen um our our life is in our own hands we must be in control we must be the ones that make um tomorrow dawn arrive when that's simply not true. And those are grace moments when we are, our vision is lifted and we are surprised by God's grace somewhere that we didn't expect it. Um, where there is laughter, where there's dazzlement, there's whimsy outside of right here. And so one thing I though, I think, Grace does come, though, in your everyday duties and your everyday um, drudgery and your everyday cares and concerns and busyness. Grace can also come in that way. So I want to caveat a little bit what he's saying here, that sometimes that obligation um, that takes over life and practice our minds, um, grace can come in those moments, too. And when we grasp greedily at it, that sometimes he kind of makes it sound here as if we're greedily grasping grace that we want to possess it. It's no longer grace. I want to nuance that a little bit. Um, grace is a free gift, of course. Um, it's like the man in the wilderness as well. I mean, it's um, if we try to get more than we need or have at the moment, it's not, can't be like stored up for the next day. It will, more needs to be given and that will be given by God. But sometimes when you know you need grace, um, we do grasp at it. And where God, the thing key here is, where does God want you to grasp at it? God wants you to find grace in promise, um, not in duty, not in work, not in yourself, but in him. So God wants you to come and greedily grasp grace at the altar when you get that forgiveness through the sacrament greedily come up and say, I need this. I want it. And God, give it to me, please. Um, it's greedy, but it's because it's a greedy, um, grace-filled greed in that case, because it's um, God wants you to have it. In our baptism on promises every day, um, God's forgiveness isn't going to run out. And you don't have to worry about being too greedy in certain times of your life and asking for it from God or, or needing it as if like your quota will be filled too early in your life. God's grace will continue to come. That's something we can be greedy about. But part of this, his point here um, is that if we grasp that grace, sometimes it's surprise factor will go. And so there's both. God, we know where God wants to be found in word and sacrament. So be greedy all the time there. But also that dazzlement. God will surprise you with grace moments in your world, in your life. Um, God, the creator, will create new beauty. Like we were talking about the sunshine earlier today, about just the awe of and breathtaking um, joy of that. It's a little bit of a hidden God there, so I would caution a little bit there. Or God will grace you with somebody calling you or visiting you or saying just the right thing to you um, or picking up a task that you need help on. 
um, those grace moments are a surprise and do dazzle us when we realize that we are not alone and that God is providing us in, unex for, in unexpected ways. So a little bit of, you know, the, the Trinitarian understanding of how God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and that God's glory is uh, evident in those different ways, where God will definitely be found and be greedy as get out with those ways, please. But then also how God will surprise you um, in an unexpected way to dazzle you in your weariness in an, our otherwise dully gray field of vision, God will give those moments of dazzlement and light and hope and wonder to you so that you know that we do have a God and that God is for you. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. We give thanks for the, the sun that is shining today and um, dazzling us with the beauty all around us. We give thanks for a new day that dazzles us with your forgiveness, that finds us in your grace and creates that joy and that wonder that you have found us with a word to tear us away from the things in front of us, Lord, that we are fixating on and give us perspective and hope in the fullness of life in you. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. We pray for all of those in need of care this day, Lord. We pray for healing. We pray for miracles. We pray for living water and um, the word that is more than just our daily bread, Lord. But we pray for also that daily bread of of medicine and care and concern, and also the gift of forgiveness given from you to us and also to ourselves and to others around us. For the gifts of relationships with others, Lord, we, we ask you to be in our relationships today and that you dazzle the people in our lives, maybe break their fixation on things that are not helpful or um, life-giving and grace them with some dazzling. For the communion of faith in your church, Lord, we, we give you thanks and we ask that in the season of Lent, we enjoy these gathering times of midweek Lent soup, Lenten soup dinners and um, all the ways that we are a community and faith in you. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for our whole world in need, for leaders who um, fixate maybe on power and prestige and things that are not life-giving. And we pray for those who enact and and keep laws and enforce laws. We pray for those who have power to make decisions and to influence. May you give them the grace that surpasses that understanding or perhaps that brings understanding. For the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, we pray. We pray for um, Syria and Turkey. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia. We pray for people in our in our communities that are also in the midst of strife or uncertainty. May your grace um, enfold them in your mercy. For all who work for peace and international harmony, we ask that you also 
do make that work part of our work as well. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, help us to be aware, Lord, and where we can do better, help us to do better. And while we hope and pray for the new heavens and the new earth, help us to be better stewards now of the one you've given us. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, Lord, continue in this time of Ad, um, Lent to um, journey with us, to be God with us in our valleys and in our ups and downs. Um, remind us continually of all that you have done for us, through us, in us. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen. <laughs>